Once I wanted to make a counter circuit with seven segment displays. But then I realized too late that I didn't have a chip needed for it in stock. And it was Sunday. My nearby electronics store was closed and also ordering would have taken a few days. So the question came up, how can I finish the project in time? Well, I just built the chip myself. So I got some sand, extracted the silicon from it and baked the chip in a kitchen oven. Ow. Finally I was able to finish the project successfully. Don't you believe it? Okay, it's a little bit more complicated. I'll show you in the next minutes how you can still realize arbitrary logic in a chip and that you don't need much more than an Arduino and a smaller transistor circuit. The solution are programmable logic devices, PLD for short. These are ICs that can be programmed with individual logic functions. Thus, circuits that normally require several logic gates can now be implemented with a single chip. I will give you an overview on the different types of PLDs now. Programmable array logic or PALS have been around since the 1970s. Originally they could only be programmed once, but later came UV erasable ePALS and electrically erasable EE PALS. But PALS have the downside that you have to choose between four types with different hardwired output logic. In 1984, Lattice introduced an ePAL with programmable output logic which allows to mimic all of these hardwired PALs and called it generic array logic or GAL. Soon other manufacturers brought clones on the market, like the PEEL from CMOS Technology or the ATF from Atmel. GAL is often used as a synonym for this kind of ePALs, but in reality it is just the brand. Kind of like Coca-Cola is a synonym for all unhealthy sweet drinks with dark color. Lattice has since discontinued the GAL, but the ATFs from Atmel now microchips are still made. Also the GAL are still easily available as new old stock from numerous suppliers. So these chips are best suited for smaller logic circuits like Lua Logic. For more complex tasks there are complex programmable logic devices, CPLD, and feed programmable gate arrays, FPGA. With these even whole microcontrollers can be realized. Here I have both the GAL 16V8 and the compatible ATF 16V8 from Atmel. These have 16 input pins of which 8 can be programmed both as input and output. Their big brother, the GAL and ATF 22V10 have 22 inputs and up to 10 I.O. pins. The idea behind these programmable chips is straightforward. Any digital circuit can be built with OR gates, AND gates and inverters. So an array logic consists of an OR with multiple inputs fed by AND gates. At the inputs of the gates are so called fuses. These are programmable switches which either connect the input or not. If not, it is always on high level due to the pull up resistor and therefore inactive. The fuses determine which inputs of the AND gates are relevant. These inputs are connected directly or via an inverter to the input pins. Now we want to program a circuit that implements this logic table here. First we derive the boolean equation. The two parts to the right and left of the OR are called product terms. Each product term is assigned to one of the AND gates. Now we pop out the fuses which are not considered in the terms. If we look closely we can see an XOR. So in this way we can program digital circuits. Now how is this done in practice? Let's take a look at the datasheet. The output logic contains the OR operation, but I will come back to this later. The horizontal lines correspond to the AND gates, the vertical lines are the direct and inverted connections to the input pins. Thus the crossings correspond to the fuses. If we want to program our XOR here again, we need to set these fuses. Notice what? We can also represent the whole thing as a matrix. A zero means the fuse is set, one means the fuse is not set. Now let's come back to the output logic. In the simplest configuration this is an OR with 8 inputs for the product terms. After that comes an XOR, a switchable inverter for negative logic. Then an output driver which is always switched through in this mode. And finally a feedback of the output into the fuse matrix. This configuration is called simple mode. 
Above you see the pulse that can be emulated in this mode. In complex mode we can turn off the output driver with the result of one of the product terms. With this we can realize a tri-state output or we can configure the pin as an input. In registered mode we have an additional D-flip-flop with Dorsey a result of the outputs on its rising edge at the clock pin. In this mode the clock is applied through pin 1 and the output driver is controlled by pin 11 which is named chip enable. Both the fuse matrix and the control bits for the output logic need now be written to the chip in some form. Here the JDEC format has become established. JDEC stands for Joint Electron Device Engineering Council. A JDEC file essentially consists of an array with the so-called fuse map and the control bits for the output logic. Since JDEC files are ASCII files, we can edit them with any text editor. But this is very tedious. To make life easier for us, there are many hardware description languages and JDEC compilers available. I downloaded the compiler for Universal Programmable Logic or Cupel from the microchip homepage. You can see that the tool is a bit outdated, but it still runs fine under Windows 10. There are also many examples coming with it, which help to understand the use of Cupel. Here is one that shows all kind of logic gates. First, there is different information on the version, the programmer and stuff like this, but most important is the chip type, so the compiler knows for which platform to compile. Then come aliases for the inputs and outputs. These are then simply linked with Boolean equations. Pretty intuitive, isn't it? After clicking on compile, we get the JDEC file with the ones where the fuses are literally turned out and zeros where they are left in. Clicking simulate lets us check with the simulator if the equations do what they are expected to do. If everything works well, we can write the JDEC file into the PLD with the programmer. If you do electronics as a hobby, you will hardly want to buy an expensive programmer. But fortunately you can build your own programmer with an Arduino with very little effort. The circuit is very simple, so you can even build it on a breadboard. Schematic and software is available on GitHub. Check out the link in the video description. To program the device a voltage of 10 to 14 volt has to be applied to pin 2, depending on the chip type. The pins then get a different function and JDEC data can be read and written through a serial protocol and addressed over a 6-bit wide address bus. The protocol is not disclosed by the manufacturers, but nifty guys have re-engineered it with the help of logic analyzers. So I recreated the afterburner project from OLE00 on a breadboard. The programming voltage comes from one of these step-up converter modules you can find everywhere on eBay or AliExpress. However, this programmer needs one with a control pin to switch on and off the programming voltage. I didn't have one with such a pin and retrofitting it as described on the side was too fiddly for me. But with two generic transistors the problem was solved quickly. So you can even do without the module and take the programming voltage directly from your bench power supply. You can of course build the circuit on a breadboard like I did. But if you want a more durable solution, I recommend your circuit board from PCBGOGO. PCBGOGO makes high quality PCBs for a very good price. Order 5 double layer PCBs for only $5 or even for free. Go to PCBGOGO.com and check it out. Here I set the programming voltage needed for the chip. For the GAL this is 12 volt. For the Atmel ATF it is 10 volt. Then I load the sketch into the Arduino and start the afterburner tool in a command line. It needs a few parameters to work. The most important are D, which sets the COM port where the Arduino is connected to. T is the PLD type and F the JDEC file. This is followed by a command. E erases the fuses. This has to be done before the chip will be programmed. And R reads the fuses. In a freshly erased chip all fuses are unscrewed and the fuse map contains only ones. With W we screw in the fuses according to the zeros in the JDEC file. With U we verify if writing was successful without errors. If there comes no error message everything is ok. Reading again with R returns the fuse map on the command line. Now that we got to know the PLD, we can finish the electronic project now. Let's start with Cupel. I take the counter example that comes with WinCupel as a base. 
It runs right out of the box and counts the rising edges on the clock pin supplied by a 555. The red LEDs represent 4 bit values and the yellow one the carry. So these counters can be cascaded. The counter can be reset with a high level on pin 2 and a high level on pin 3 lets it count backwards. The whole thing is realized as a state machine. The states are represented by 9 output bit patterns, each of these showing a number. Depending on the direction set on pin 3, it either jumps to the next or to the previous state. My idea was to extend these states to correspond to the patterns of a 7 segment display. So I modified the file. But when I tried to compile, it complained that it needed more product terms than the chip actually has. To remember, in registered mode the OR gates in the output logic have only 8 inputs for the ANDed input pins, but this configuration here needs more. This means that I have two options. I can simplify the circuit by reducing the number of output states, but then get fewer counter values. Or I can hard code the counting direction by removing the IF statements. And if my application doesn't allow this, I can still go for the more complex CPLDs. Since I only wanted to count up, I removed the IFs for the counting direction and everything compiled smoothly. So I could finally finish the project with my self-made IC. If you enjoyed the video or found it somewhat helpful, please hit the like button to recommend it to more people. Check out my other videos and subscribe if you like this too. And if you turn on notifications you won't miss any of my new videos. Buy me a coffee or become a patron on Patreon and get ad free previews of new videos. Thank you for watching.